What if you had a pair of glasses that you could put on and you could see screens everywhere? These are the Vitur XR glasses and what they are promising to do is be exactly what we wanted. A pair of glasses that shows you screens as if you've got holograms all around you. However, as I've been testing the Vitur XR glasses over time, it's a little bit clearer to me that this is not exactly what we wanted, but it does offer some really cool benefits that mean that you might want to pick one up anyway. So as a quick breakdown of what you get, these are called the XR glasses and apparently they cost $549, but they are sometimes on discount. It can go down as low as like $439, but this doesn't have a computer in it. They are just glasses and if you want to use them with things like your Android phone, or other devices like a, a Steam Deck or something like the ROG Ally, what you have to do is you have to plug this cable into it. So this is not cable free. If you want to use these glasses to see cool stuff around you, you're essentially tethering yourself to a device. Plug this cable on like this, it's magnetic. You plug this into your Android phone or your ROG Ally, and then you can see what's on the screen of your device in these glasses. But to give you an idea of what actually happens, basically you put these glasses on and you will see a screen in front of you. Now that screen can actually do one of two things. You can fix it in place so that when you move away, the screen stays there. Or you can use the second option where you have the screen in front of you and it stays in front of you wherever you look. Now if you want to stream movies and watch YouTube and that sort of thing, but you don't want to plug it into your phone, then you can also plug this into this which is the neck band. If you unfold it, you can actually put it on your neck. And now I've basically got an Apple TV hanging around my neck and I can see the screen in the glasses. Now, if you do want this neck band, remember it's gonna cost you another $200. And if you want the case that keeps it charged, it's another $90 on top of that. These glasses are never going to be used completely wirelessly, which is kind of strange because I feel like the dream was to have XR glasses that you put on you can see everything. It's like Tony Stark's glasses from the Avengers. You're always going to be wired to this, the neckband, or you're going to be using a longer wire plugged into your phone. But because you're always plugged into the neckband or your phone, it means that you don't need batteries to run this. Now, in general, the XR glasses are actually really impressive. When you put them on, they don't look that different from a pair of sunglasses. They're not the coolest sunglasses I've ever seen, but, you know, they do look like a pair of glasses. They don't look like a giant VR headset. But the next thing is that the screen quality is actually really nice. So that's pretty much all you want. A pair of glasses that shows you a screen so that you can play games or watch YouTube in a screen that kind of floats in front of you. But this is where it starts to get a little bit complicated. Although the technology is so impressive that it's basically exactly what we asked for, glasses with a screen in it, it's also not what we wanted, and I'll explain why. The technology is really cool, okay? You've got a pair of sunglasses, and in front of them, you've got transparent screens, so you can see through them, but as you can already see, it's very, very dark. What actually happens is that it feels like you're wearing a pair of sunglasses and there's a screen in front of you and then it's just really, really dark for about 70% of the screen. And then at the bottom of that screen, along the bottom and around the edges, there is slightly less dark area that you can kind of see what's around your room. And then outside of that, in the periphery, you can actually see just like a normal pair of glasses. Just outside the edges, you can just see the periphery at normal brightness. What that means is that when you've got these glasses on, it's pretty dark. It's as dark as if you had a pair of pretty dark sunglasses on. And then the top part in the middle, which is about 50 to 60% of your visual area, is even darker. So if you're on a plane and you're not really looking at stuff around you anyway, it's basically just a really nice big screen that you've got in front of you, which basically solves the issue of having to like hunch over and look down at your Steam Deck or your Nintendo Switch. You can just look straight forward and hold your Steam Deck like this in your lap and just play games in a super comfortable position. So in that regard, it's amazing. And it's something I can't really do with my VR headsets. If I sat in a plane with my MetaQuest or if I got a MetaQuest 2 or the new ones coming out soon, the MetaQuest 3, I still don't think there's a way to plug a cable directly into a Steam Deck or Nintendo Switch and have the screen in front of you. I think there just still isn't a way to do that easily. So the other cool thing about these glasses that people talk about is that it's like having a giant TV in front of you. 
However, there are two ways to make a screen look really big. First of all, you can buy a giant 60 inch TV and put it far away, or you can just grab your phone and just put it right in front of your face. It looks much more like a screen right in front of you like this than it does look like a 60 inch TV that's far away. You can adjust the distance so that the screen is a little bit further away. The screen will also obviously get a little bit smaller, but it doesn't look like a TV far away. When you're in VR, you don't feel like you're looking at a screen that's right close to your eyes. Physically speaking, you do. You have two screens right in front of your eyes and you're looking right at it. But in VR, whatever they do with the technology, they can make it look like stuff is really far away and really, really big. I don't know if it's to do with like focusing distances or how the lenses work. These lenses do not do that. If you're at home, you've got a TV, so you don't need these glasses. Even if you put the glasses on at home, you put them on and you can't really see anything else anyway. Now the other use case for this would be out of the home. Let's say that you're going for a walk or you're I don't know, on the bus. In a situation where you're on the plane, absolutely. If you fly every week and you're going places all the time, this is really, really cool because you've got a screen in front of you, which is way nicer than looking at the screen that's built into the back of the seat in front of you. So on a plane, yes. I also don't really care how I look on a plane. On a bus, no. I'm not gonna use this on a bus because if I put this on when I'm on the bus, then it's just, I'm, I'm gonna miss my stop. I can barely see what's going on. I'm also really self-conscious about all the people coming on the bus and getting off the bus and looking at me like, what on earth has that guy got on his face? They're not inconspicuous. I might use them on the bus if they weren't sunglasses. If these screens were much clearer. I don't know what kind of reflective glass they're using in here, but the screen comes from the top, it bounces in and then reflects into your eye. It just makes the whole thing really, really dark. There is a mode where you can switch it on to like shutters mode and not shutters mode. If you are not shutters mode, it looks exactly how I've described it. But if you put like shutters mode on, it makes everything like even darker. It has a cost of $550. And then when it's on sale or the discount that they're offering on their main shop, it's like $440. Now, I don't think that's prohibitively expensive, but I feel like at $450 or $550, I wanted a device that would actually be more like something I could use around the house. I would like to be able to walk around the house, do the dishes, clean up the floor, and then I want to be able to move my you know, VR screen to the corner, so I'm just kind of watching a movie in the corner. It would be really cool if these XR glasses worked the way that we kind of thought that XR glasses would work. Tons of holograms and screens that you can place anywhere. This is a pair of glasses that once you've put them on, you can't really see anything else. But you also can't really put screens anywhere you want. If I use my hands to show you, it's like this is the screen, and then as I look to my left, the screen just kind of goes like this, and then the screen's disappeared. And then when I look back at the front, the screen reappears. So if the screen disappears when I'm not looking at it directly, then why do I need to have a screen in my periphery at all? In a way, it doesn't need to be a pair of sunglasses. This doesn't need to be clear, and this doesn't need to be so small. What I really need is just a VR pair of glasses where I can't see what's going on and that I can plug into my Steam Deck. The second thing about the screen in here is that I could not find a way to make it not rotate. If I tilt my head like this, the screen will also kind of tilt. So it's like, okay, screen's not moving, screen's not moving, that's totally fine. Three degrees of freedom, okay, I'm gonna tilt my head and now the screen's also kind of tilted which is not what happens on a TV. You're looking at a TV in front of you. When you tilt your head like this, the whole TV doesn't tilt. It just stays put because it's on a stand. That's what we expect in VR. That's what we expect in real life. That's not what happens with the XR glasses. Now, I have seen a few other reviews where people say that using these glasses for any period of time at all makes them feel kind of sick. I could play video games for half an hour, an hour, and I was totally fine with these glasses. No problem. What made me feel unwell was watching a 3D movie. For some reason, it comes with like some 3D movies, like test movies that you can watch in here. And I watched some of the footage for like 10, 20 minutes. And I was like, yeah, I don't feel sick. What are those reviewers talking about? And then I took the glasses off and I was like, I wasn't actually physically sick, but I didn't 
feel very good. And for the next three hours, I didn't want to see any screens in my house. Now, I don't know what's causing that exactly, but I have a feeling it's something to do with the frame rate. I think 3D movies have a weird way of projecting to your eyes, in addition to the fact that the movies are often 24 or 48 frames per second, and it doesn't, honestly, it just doesn't really work for me. But then it could also just be that the screen just doesn't rotate, especially when I'm watching a movie and I'm relaxed. I'm kind of leaning back a little bit, tilting my head a little bit. My head's very unlikely to be in this upright position. The other thing is that when you do move your head around, even if you're not tilting your head, it does have some slight jitters and stutters, and that's because the position tracking on here is just a normal accelerometer. It knows how much you've moved to the right and it knows how much you've moved to the left, but if you do it too fast and you do it too much, eventually the screen will just kind of drift off somewhere else. It was pretty good though, I didn't feel like I had to do it very often, but if I, when I was testing it, like, really, really violently moving my head around, it did eventually kind of drift off. And that's because it doesn't have cameras on the front like a VR headset. Now, this is the mobile dock. It's like $160, which I think is quite a reasonable price. And it's quite cool because it can do all sorts of things. Basically, you can plug pretty much any HDMI device that you want to into the HDMI port. You can plug your Nintendo Switch in or other USB-C devices directly in using the USB-C port. And there are actually two outputs for XR glasses. So if you and a friend both spent $550 on your XR glasses, you could both plug into one switch and you could both see the screen in front of you. You wouldn't have to be sharing a tiny screen, you could just look straight up at your giant screens in front of you. And then on top of all that, it also helps the switch last longer, or the Steam Deck, whatever you're plugging into it, because this is also a mobile battery. There's plenty more that can be said, but I just want to say for this video that this is actually really, really cool. The screen looks really, really nice, but it just doesn't act exactly like you think it would. This is not the vision of the future that we had. It's the vision of the future that we thought we wanted. We thought we wanted glasses that could do this, but really it doesn't quite do it the way that we had hoped. And at $550, I feel like this is just kind of a luxury purchase for people who want to be able to use like a giant screen when they're on the plane. People who actually fly every week, this is kind of awesome for that. Listen up, that's all for the review. I hope you've enjoyed it. If there is anything you'd like me to test out specifically, there's a lot of stuff. There's the mobile dock, there's the neck band, there's other features of the screen that I probably haven't even been able to cover today, but do let me know in the comments below what you'd like to know about this headset. Anyway, that's all I've got time for today. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Check out this video next if you're interested in technology. I've been Nihongo Gamer. I'll see you real, real soon.